Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. It's been nearly a year since my last 5 star weapon tier list, so to celebrate the it's almost been a year momentous occasion, I'll be updating my previous 5 star weapon tier list with all the new weapons introduced since then. So this is actually where we left off, and I'm actually going to do some housekeeping for this tier list before we start putting weapons in and out and moving them around. So the first thing I'm going to do is that for this tier list and for simplicity's sake, I'm actually going to remove the Dolphin Plus tier list as after adjusting the tier list even more, I feel like I'm pretty happy with where it is. There are just a few weapons here and there that, you know, Dolphin Pluses might want to consider over the free to play slash low spenders. However, I just felt like it didn't quite justify another tier list for this specific video. And I'm also going to add a tier above the B tier called the pull only for one to two characters tier. Now this tier is obviously just as it says that if you are pulling specifically for one or two characters then you should consider this weapon otherwise I would even you know put it somewhere lower than the pull only tier. And looking at this a bit more I feel like honestly B and C tier could be merged together but it's fine we'll just leave it, the rest of it as it is. But really quick it's time to pay some bills and today's sponsor is Archer Cat 2. Partake in adorable cat infused chaos. The peace between witches and cats has ended and the cat's kingdom is in turmoil. It's up to you and your adorable squad of cats to fight off equally adorable mushrooms, slimes, and even walking cacti. Annihilate these adorable frenemies with tsunamis, lightning bolts, explosions, and all sorts of death-inducing abilities. Enjoy conquering endless waves of progressively cuter enemies with even larger explosions and death-inducing abilities. Archer Cat 2 is a relaxing and casual shooting defense game that's perfect for a brief interlude in your busy day. Play it on the go, play it in bed, play it with one hand, and even play it on the toilet. Anyone can pick up and play this game anytime, and you'll always have a sense of progression since Archer Cat 2 also has an idle reward system that provides you tons of resources just by literally existing and logging in every once in a while. And besides, can you really resist playing as this adorable cat? There's even tons of adorable little outfits. Just smash that link down below to get started today. Huge thanks to Archer Cat 2 for sponsoring today's video. So next let's actually jump into some adjustments before we hop into the brand new weapons. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move the Jade Cutter up to the top spot. And I actually find this weapon to be just like my always go to sword weapon when I just want a general usage sword weapon. So the next thing we're going to quickly do is just scoot the Staff of Homa down to the bottom of the S tier. I've been debating as to whether or not I should actually move it into the A tier, but for now I think it's still a good enough general pull arm as well as being the best in slot option for Hu Tao, which probably still justifies its S rank placement. Now, a big change I'm going to do is the Wolf's Greystone, which I'm going to move all the way down to the B tier. And we're going to see why a bit later as we jump into some of the new weapons, but one argument for a lot of the weapons moving around is that, well, we have new weapons that are, have been introduced that could either compete with this weapon or be best in slot for more characters or whatever, therefore pushing certain weapons further down the list. Now the next weapon I'm going to move is the Amos Bow. Amos Bow is really not a good general use weapon and honestly it's only really good for Ganyu and perhaps Tignari as well, although not quite as good on Tignari as Ganyu for obvious reasons because it doesn't have elemental mastery. Now the next weapon is I'm going to move the Skyward Harp to the top of B tier and as we've gotten more bows and stuff the Skyward Harp has become more and more unremarkable and in particular when we compare it to many of the other weapons their crit values even without you know the passive is already competitive to the Skyward Harps or even better so that's one reason why I'm scooting it down a bit. Now the next weapon I'm going to move is the Redhorn Stone Thresher and I'm going to put this above the Amos Bow in this tier but Basically the Red Horn Stone Thresher, especially with another Claymore that was introduced, this weapon has become much more niche in the sense that it's really only recommended for two primary characters, Noel and Ito, and perhaps Xin Yan as well, but you know, that's Xin Yan that we're talking about. And up next is the Calamity Queller. So again, we have another polearm that was introduced that 
is indeed overall better than the Calamity Queller for many situations. I'm gonna actually move it down to the top of the B tier. And even for a character like Shin he, I would recommend, for example, on a banner like today's banner, pulling on things like Ayaka's Constellations or even Shin he's Constellation 1 or 2 before pulling for the Calamity Queller. Hence why I decided to actually move this down to the B tier. Now that wraps up the adjustments for the tier list and we're gonna actually dive into the new weapons. Starting with the Aqua Simulacra, which is Yilan's signature weapon, this thing is an absolute beast. This thing provides 20% bonus damage pretty much unconditionally, just as long as an enemy is nearest you and the range on it is pretty decent. And it's just simply one of the best bows in the game. It's got a massive amount of crit damage. Obviously, it's the best in slot for one of the best characters in the game. Yelan, it's situationally the best in slot weapon for even Child or even Ganyu, and it's good on literally every DPS build character, even including a character like Tignari. Bonus damage, crit damage are so universal that every character can really capitalize on it and utilize it to its fullest. I'm putting this thing into the S tier, and where in the S tier, I think I would probably just put it right behind the Primordial Jade Cutter. It is that good of a general use weapon. It is just one of the best weapons in the entire game. Up next is actually the Hunter's Path, which is another new five-star bow. Provides 12% bonus damage as well as the same amount of crit value as the Aqua Simulacra does. However, in crit rate instead of crit damage. What's interesting about this is that basically for many, many characters, this thing is the Aqua Simulacra, but a little bit worse because it provides less bonus damage. As such, it's kind of like you choosing between two weapons, one being slightly worse than the other, you will always choose the one that's slightly better than the other. Nonetheless, it is still slightly the best in slot for Tignari. It is also pretty good with Melt Ganyu, especially paired with Melt Nahida. The EM scaling for char shot damage is quite niche and again is mainly just good for Tignari. With all that being said though, it is still a great general weapon and I'm going to put it in the A tier behind the Polar Star. The next weapon is the Staff of Scarlet Sands. Staff of Scarlet Sands provides a ton of attack based on your elemental mastery. So in other words, the characters that can capitalize the most on this weapon are obviously attack scaling pole arm characters that also like having elemental mastery. In this situation, it is the best in slot for Sino obviously, but you know, Sino right now isn't in the best of spots in terms of the meta. However, it is also really good on Reverse Vape Xiang Ling. Reverse Vape Xiang Ling can capitalize on this because of her Guoba who can, you know, hit the enemy multiple times and then you can use her Elemental Burst, getting all three stacks on the Staff of Scarlet Sands. And it is good on a Reverse Melt Rosaria, but Reverse Melt isn't quite as popular. Because of this, it is actually better than the Staff of Homa in those two previous aforementioned situations for Xiang Ling and for Rosaria. However, this weapon is not that great on Hu Tao and the Staff of Homa is just a general much better general use polearm because it's almost not quite as good as the Staff of Scarlet Sands for Reverse Vape, Reverse Melt, etc. But it is significantly better in other situations where those things are not the focus. I'm going to put it in the A tier as it's still a great weapon. And I'm actually going to put it above the Primordial Jade Wing Spear. The next weapon is the Key of Kajni Sut. This is a very unique and niche weapon which provides HP% percent as well as an elemental mastery buff to that specific character based on their HP and finally even a party-wide elemental mastery buff. And that party-wide elemental mastery buff is actually quite significant on characters like Nilo and Kuki who will provide 140-ish or 100-ish elemental mastery respectively at refinement 1, which is really good. That's a lot of elemental mastery for a refinement 1 5-star weapon. And what's interesting is that some off-meta characters can use this too, like Layla and Chi Chi, perhaps they can use it on a fridge team. And Nilo is just a really good character and Kuki is also an exceptionally good character. Pretty much all the teams that Nilo and Kuki would be run on really do appreciate having that elemental mastery buff. As such, I'm actually going to put this really highly 
right above the Thundering Pulse in the A tier below the Freedom Soren, as generally weapons that can buff your entire party's damage bring a lot of value in comparison to weapons that perhaps only buff a single character's damage. So the next weapon is a Thousand Floating Dreams, Nahida's signature weapon. Now this weapon provides a ton of elemental mastery for the character that uses it, and it even provides an unconditional 40 elemental mastery buff to the entire team at refinement 1. However, this weapon actually doesn't really buff Nahida's damage by very much, but Nahida can also grab the elemental mastery stat on this thing and share it with her team thanks to her buff that shares her elemental mastery to the on-field character. I honestly think this weapon is mainly just good for Nahida, but Nahida is obviously one of the best characters in the game, so I'm going to put this at the top of the pull only tier, pull only for Nahida. Now this weapon you can use as some interesting buffer for various situations, like you can put it on a support catalyst user that can you know just be on your team and provide 40 elements of mastery but 40 element of mastery just really isn't that big of a buff even compared to you know some of the other weapons on this list or even compared to something like the thrilling tales of dragon slayers so after nahida came the wanderer and his weapon the tule tula's remembrance i'm sorry if i'm saying that terribly wrong but the passive on this thing literally only buffs normal attacks wander is the only catalyst character that really really relies on his normal attacks to do a lot of damage and off the top of my head i think constellation 3 wander even does a ton of damage with his element of burst which this weapon doesn't even help the other catalyst characters i know that they do use some normal attacks but they don't nearly rely on the, their normal attack damage in comparison to other parts of their kits. So as such, I'm throwing it into the pull only tier and I'm gonna put it, I think above the Amos still because it's still a better weapon than the Amos for most other characters because of the crit rate that it provides. Now, the next weapon is the Light of Fallier Incision. Light of Falling Incision provides a tiny amount of crit rate, which I find very interesting. More importantly, it's passive only adds flat damage to normal attacks as well as elemental skill damage for 28 instances that's a lot of instances and it scales off of elemental mastery obviously so because of that um, this weapon ends up actually becoming pretty niche think of the characters that use swords that want to stack elemental mastery that do normal attack damage there's really not very many in fact there's only really two and those two characters are alhatham and aggravate Kaching, both of which are very solid characters. So as such, you know, I only recommend really pulling for this weapon for Alhatham as well as aggravate Kaching. And as such, I'm going to toss it in here right next to the Thousand Floating Dreams. Yeah, I'm just going to put it right here. I think this is a fair spot to put it. Although it's probably slightly better of a general usage weapon in comparison to the other weapons in this tier due to the 4% crit rate that it provides, but I just don't think that justifies an entire tier movement for it. Now the next weapon is the Beacon of the Reed Sea. So this weapon is Deus' signature weapon and it provides up to 40% attack with a couple of very achievable conditions, which is to t get hit once or take damage once, as well as to hit an enemy with your elemental skill. So as such, uh, this is the best in slot weapon for Dea for what it's worth for today. That's not really worth very much. Perhaps in the future it'll be worth a little bit more. But this is also situationally the best in slot option for Eula, as Eula will often get hit during her elemental burst, and she has a lot of armor too during it, and it provides the crit rate as well, which is great for her because then you don't have to crit fish so much with Eula, which is huge for her. This is situationally the best Claymore for Deluke, for Beidou, for Razor, for Chongyun, for Dory. So yeah, as you can see, this weapon does it all. And this is the main reason why the other generalist Claymore, the Wolf's Gravestone, was moved so far down. It's actually because of the Beacon of the Reed Sea. And I'm going to put this in the S tier, and I'm actually going to put this above the Staff of Home. I am. And I forgot to mention, this thing has a lot of crit rate as a substat, which is incredible for a Claymore. Overall, an awesome Claymore that is great on Claymore characters, but that's one of the problems is that right now, in terms of DPS Claymore characters, they're not all that great, right? We have we have Dea, we have Physical Eula, who's kind of fallen a bit out of the meta since right now it's Dendro Impact. But anyway, I can see this weapon being excellent for just pretty much any attack scaling Claymore character, and I think it deserves this spot in this tier list.
That wraps up my update to the five star weapon tier list as of Genshin Impact patch 3.5. Let me know what you agree with or disagree with down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.